Well, hello there, YouTube friends and followers. I was going through my kit that I used last time with my first two videos that I shot with my phone, and uh, I thought I uh, straightened the camera out a little bit. I thought that I'd uh, just show you what I was using, and we'll go from there then. So I was chop some of the wood here I used uh, my Haltzbrook Akka. I just went through this and all I did is touched it up a little bit and stropped it. I got a I got a strop here that I bought from mm, can't remember where but it comes with this thin piece of leather on there and what I did is I added a thicker piece the thicker the leather, the more of a convex grind you end up getting. You know, more of this versus this. And I, I like that for my axe here and for general bushcraft knives. I got my tops bob, and that's got a nice convex grind on there. It's a saber grind, so it's basically a tall Scandi, but anyway, I wanted to go through, because I never shot the beginning of that video, so I wanted to kind of go through my kit of what I used for the flint and steel fire. And this is, well, let me see here, this, I think it came with these two. show you here that is my the little bag that it came with nice leather bag and then this is a tin with a uh, char cloth in it come with a nice striker here and then a couple pieces of flint and some jute twine What I added to it is a few pieces of fat wood that I got here. I don't know if you can see them colors in there. Them are some nice dark orange colors, just filled with resin. And then I added some more flint that I made. Well, I didn't make the flint, you know, Mother Nature did, but I got some big chunks of flint for Christmas, and I just chopped off pieces. And I also added, in a little baggie here, I added some uh, cotton balls for extra tinder. And I thought while I was doing this, I was going through my stuff here and I got some pieces of jute and what I do to split it up is I cut it into pieces or I don't know six eight inches long and then you'll see how they're wrapped they're twisted like this way what I do is I just untwist it Till it's fluffy and flat there and then I twist it a little bit more past that and then see how it just comes out like that and I do that for the whole strand Let's get you in frame here I do that for the whole strand and it makes it a lot easier to separate and pull apart otherwise it uh, binds up and tangles on you. Well, at least on me it does. So I just go about it this way. And I figured while I had some cut off the main bunch there, I'd just fluff it up and get it ready. Ends up looking like this stuff. Nice and fluffy. And then I just start peeling it apart. 
as fine as I can get it. And then I add it to my pile that I already got started. That way, just if if oh, I don't know, you're you're cold, your your hands are numb, you need a fire quickly. Well, then I just use my lighter. But uh, you still want to try to do it this way, or if this is all you end up having in an emergency, then uh, it's nice to have stuff prepared ahead of time. And I just add that to the bunch here and kind of fluff that up like that. And you got yourself a nice little bird's nest start there. And then I can put that inside of... Uh, some dried grass, some uh, really fine shaved feather sticks, some dust from uh, the scrapings from my fat wood off the back of my knife. I can scrape it. But that's what I got there. I wanted to shoot a little quick one that way. And the, uh, let me get you down here. The uh, flint and steel, this is a really nice kit, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but we'll see. Catch them sparks. Very good kit. Uh, as soon as I get the name, I'll put it in a link up here or down in the description and uh, let you know where I got it and the company. I ordered it online. And uh, anyway, that's my fire kit, the, the flint and steel kit that I started that flint and steel fire with. I got my uh, silky gomboy saw that I used. It's the 300 series. I like this one because as you can see it's uh, quite lengthy. The only problem with these is from what I've found is uh, they cut on a pull stroke, not on a push. So the blades are fairly flimsy. They do spring back, but if you kink them too bad, they'll, they do actually snap off. So when I cut, I'm not, I'm not pushing down on a push. I just kind of push, you know, and then I pull when I'm cutting, when I'm pulling back. I don't know if you can see it on my sleeve there. See how it pushes, it, but then it grabs coming this way. So these are designed to cut on a pull stroke, not on a push stroke. Hopefully that'll help some of you out there. They are great saws as long as you use them the right way. Uh, Another thing I used was my condor machete from, let me get you in frame again, my condor machete from uh, Amazon. I ordered it through Amazon, but it's actually condor. It's the Warlock model. I like this over a traditional machete because I'm not cutting tall grasses are blazing a trail through the jungle. Live in Wisconsin here so it's mostly hardwoods and pines and stuff like that. You got some grasses but nothing you really gotta chop through with a machete to uh, blaze a trail. But I just touched up the edge on here too and all my stuff is paper. That's my testing piece. It, see. Cuts are pretty good. My axe is the same way. Now there's some differences of uh, opinion and all that. Do you really need a machete and an axe razor sharp? No, I guess you don't. But I like it that way. I don't know, it's just me. Makes it a little more efficient. But I do know with the axe, if uh, you get a nice clean polished 
edge there it actually slides through the wood a little better less friction and it doesn't wedge quite as bad now it will up here because this is the blacksmith marks you know but uh, what this also does is keeps the pine pitch if you're cutting through pine or birch resin it, it keeps it from sticking so bad on the edge so when you get done chopping a log or something and you wanna you wanna do some fine work the edge will still stay fairly clean it's not gonna stay perfectly clean but fairly clean and then let's put this stuff away here otherwise I'll end up forgetting this is a uh, one and a half pound head down here the combined total weight and length it's uh, two pounds and I think it's a 24 inch handle works good nice little pack axe I enjoy it uh, of course I had my leather gloves just for doing the woodwork and well on the video it was cold forget the temperature but uh, it was cold so this is my, my little scouting kit or whatever got a pathfinder school self-reliance outfitters and in here is just my canteen kit and an extra little Mora light my fire nice little blade and it's got the uh, little fire steel on it just in case you run into a problem and this is all I got at least I got a knife and I got a fire steel and I have my cup and a canteen and I got a roll of bank line in there and a little front pocket here I have a compass I have my head torch I have another little knife this is an old little k-bar that I got I can't even find them on k-bar's website anymore and I got a little bandana 100% cotton with uh, my signal mirror inside there that's about it there. I got some packets of Propel for energy and water, just a flavor to water. And I got coffee in there. This is uh, Starbucks via instant Colombian coffee. And then I used to carry a lot more stuff, but I Going, as I'm going through my kit and I'm using it, I'm trying to take out, trying to take out the stuff that I don't use, because it's why carry it if you're not going to use it? It just adds extra weight. It sounds good in the beginning when you're when you're sitting down in the house and you're thinking about the trip, and you're thinking, oh yeah, I could use that. That'll come in handy. But then. You throw it in your pack, and my entire pack here. This I just got off offline, and it's it's just a rucksack, one big pocket on the outside or on the inside, and I got two other pockets that are just sewn on here. This is the other part of my uh, fire kit here. This is my Altoids tin with my own homemade char cloth in. And I do carry a Baco Laplander. Now this one, I'll show you the difference between this one and the other one. This one locks shut, where the silky doesn't, and it locks open. But see the size difference? And this one, see it, it cuts on the push and the pull. So, and the blade is a lot stiffer. And it's a good little all-around saw. I like them. That's why I carry it. And this, I don't want this to sound like a uh, review video or anything like that, because 
I'm not really doing reviews, but it's basically just what I use. And I know there's going to be questions like, well, I saw that saw. What saw is that? Or this or that, you know. And like I said, I with my channel, I'd like to uh, make a video like the, the fire one that I made. That was just spur of the moment type thing. I did. I just had my phone. I wasn't thinking about making a video that day. But I decided, ah, what the heck, it's my first flint and steel fire, you know, I was kind of happy. It all worked out good. And uh, so I filmed what I could. But I'd like this to be a little more educational. And as you saw me pull apart the uh, jute twine and fluff it up, that's the stuff I'd like to portray on my channel. And I'm... By no means am I an expert. I don't consider my uh, myself an expert at anything. Uh, not even at my job. I run heavy equipment, and by no means am I an expert. the The more it's funny though. The the more I learn about stuff, the more I realize how little I really know. It's what it, it. I don't know. It's just weird. Most of the stuff I've learned is through watching videos online and you know you got to watch a whole bunch of them and don't take any one person's view or outlook on something to be the all and mighty God's given truth you know because everybody does things differently if it works for you use it if it doesn't, try something else. There, Paul Kirtley, I I highly recommend checking him out. He's got an awesome channel. It's uh, Ask Paul Kirtley, and he he runs Frontier Bushcraft. Uh, Ask Paul Kirtley episodes are just great. Anyway, he he's under the philosophy that. You really don't need, like if you take a class, an online class or something, you don't really need someone's approval of if that's going to work or not. You know, the ultimate approval is when you're out in nature doing it. Nature is going to let you know if it works or not at that given time. It could be raining, it could be snowing, it could be hot, it could be dry. There's, there's a multitude of different scenarios that go into something. My uh, first flint and steel fire. The wood was a little damp, but it wasn't completely wet. I, I did my prep work. If I, if, if I go out today and try it in a slightly different area, it might not work. I might do everything exactly the same, but it still might not work. I might not get the fire right away. I might not get it at all. And it's not that it doesn't work, it's just that it didn't work then. Anyway, that was just a, wanted to do a short little video, you know, I, that's what I use, that's the, my equipment. Uh, I go through a breakdown on a different video of, you know, my pack and what I carry for just a simple day hike or maybe with I always plan for the what if kind of I always put a little extra food in there I put my water filter and stuff just in case I do something does happen it's only gonna be a day hike but it ends up being an overnight and I want to make sure I have something where I can make it overnight and that's going to change different seasons. Winter time, my pack's going to be a lot heavier because I'm going to have some extra clothes. I'm going to have uh, a wool blanket, a tarp, or a heavier sleeping bag, and a little tent, something. I, I usually don't carry the tent if I don't plan on an overnight. So I'll have at least a tarp and an emergency blanket, a grabber blanket, or uh, a wool blanket. Just in case, because you, you, you never know. And then, if I do plan an overnighter or a weekend trip, it's heavier yet. I got 
more food, I got more water, I got more stuff. And when I do an overnighter or a weekend camp, I I always bring extra because I try this out, try that out. And then at the end of the trip, I'll go through what I used and what I didn't use and refine my kit. And uh, kits evolve. You know, they, 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 don't, they don't ever stay the same unless you're in the same situation, same climate, same area, same wood, all the time. And the weather is always changing. You know, it, it rains. If, you, if you've always planned and practiced with dry stuff, how do you know it's going to work if you've never been out in the rain and one day you get stuck in the rain and you need it to work? You don't know if it's going to work because you never did it in the rain. And then if you don't pay attention to the little things, like fluffing this up nice and fine, do you need that in, in really dry conditions? No. So sometimes your fire prep slacks a little bit on necessary details when in an emergency, in wet conditions, in damp climates, this extra time doing prep work is going to make the difference between having a fire and staying warm and possibly dying. So, anyway, like I said, I just wanted to make a short little follow-up video with my uh, first flint and steel fire video. Again, guys and gals, I'm sorry I didn't get all that on camera. But I'm new to this, and I got a new camera now. It's a uh, Sony Handycam, and I'm trying that out. And hopefully I get better quality videos and get better with my editing. And we'll proceed from there. This is the Weekend Wanderer 3, signing out. And remember, I wander in order to find myself.